Hi, Tony Fowle here with another home workshop video. Uh, this time I'm going to show how I modified a screw on lathe like chuck mounting to what's known as a bane fitting, where we've got a small taper on here to locate the chuck, and there's what's called a bayonet here which holds the chuck on. And we'll see how quick this is to change chucks. I think also you can see that this is much more substantial than the screw-on fitting. Let's zoom in a little bit and uh, look in closer detail. This is the chuck. It's got a female taper in here uh, to match the male taper on the driving spindle. It's got four threaded standoffs here with four nuts on. Now the nuts are loose at the moment because all I have to do is put the chuck on, turn the bayonet piece to lock on and then tighten up on those four bolts. So it's very quick and uh, easy as we'll see on here there's a driving pin and there's a matching hole in here. Uh, so unlike a screw-on chuck, this can just as easily be operated in reverse as in the forward direction without any fear of unscrewing the chuck, which is always a danger with the screw-on chucks. So let's fit the uh, chuck and see just how easy it is. That just slides in. I turn the bayonet ring around, just lightly tighten up the nuts with my finger and then it's just a matter of nipping them up tightly with the spanner. And that's it, the job's done. The chuck's on securely, uh, it's aligned properly, all ready to go. Well this is the headstock of the lathe with the original threaded spindle. There are three reasons why I don't particularly like the threaded spindle. One is that if you've got a very heavy chuck, it can be quite difficult to hold it square to the spindle to start screwing it on. Secondly, in order to screw it on and then loosen it to take it off later, you need somehow to lock the spindle. And thirdly, the spindle is only suitable for driving in one direction. If you try and drive it in the other direction, you risk unscrewing the chuck. This is the type of spindle that I prefer to have with this conversion. It's known as a long nose taper and they were fitted to the Colchester students lay. I had one of those many years ago and liked it a lot. The only problem is in this case it would require me to get large blocks of metal to make the rather long chuck mounting back plates and I've got four of those to do and that would be rather a lot of machining work. Some years ago I had an old lathe with this bayonet fitting on which I quite like and it seemed perfect for this project. I had the foresight to keep the face plate and a backing plate for a chuck. Reference to this table showed that what I had was size 5 and it had all the dimensions that I needed for machining the new spindle. When I bought my lathe, I was lucky enough to uh, get a spare spindle with it. This is it. For doing this project, it was a big advantage because it meant the lathe was still in operation while I was preparing the spindle. I shortened the nose a little bit to suit the thickness of the mounting flange for the chuck back plate. This is going to be a light interference fit into the mounting flange. And you'll notice the knurling on the, the shaft. That's because... I'm going to put it together with Loctite as well as the light interference fit and I found before using this technique that by knurling you trap some Loctite in place so that when you push it on it doesn't scrape all the Loctite off and that's always worked well for me in the past. 
The lump of steel for the new flange uh, was rough bored initially, uh, then the spigot was rough turned and then it was finished bored to give the slight interference fit on the spindle. Uh, notice the uh, stepped bore, this was to suit the double diameter on the spindle. The next step was to drill and bore the holes for the chuck back plate locating bolts. This was all done in the milling machine. The spindle and the flange were then loctited and the two pressed together and left to set for a while. With the shaft now fitted with its new flange, it was uh, put in the lathe and supported with a fixed steady to perform some truing cuts. As it turned out, there was very, very little run out. Here we have the bayonet plate itself. The large four holes allow the nuts to be passed through freely and then the plate gets rotated such that the nuts can get tightened up against the slots. The bayonet has now been fitted onto the spindle and this is in its open position ready to take the back plate from a chuck as shown here. This shows the bayonet after it's been rotated round and we can easily see how the nuts can tighten up against the slot and hold the chuck firmly in place. Well, things are starting to get serious now. The old spindle's been removed, new bearings and seals fitted to the, the new spindle and greased up, ready for assembly. Well, the new spindle's fitted, enjoying its new life after years on the shelf. Final machining of this takes place with it in the lathe running. Well, this is a bit of a Heath Robertson setup to be able to measure the taper on the original chuck back plate. I have it offset to one side and with a long through rod I have it clamped to the nose of the spindle which has been faced off true and then with a test indicator mounted on the compound rest I set the rest to the same angle as the taper on the chuck back plate. I was then able to machine the taper on the nose to the same taper and blued it to check that it was correct. The chuck back plate from the old lathe is being repurposed to take one of my other chucks. Here it is mounted on the new bayonet uh, fitting as it will be when it's got a chuck fitted to be faced off and the spigot reduced in diameter to suit the other chuck. I needed to bore out the centers from the screw-on chuck back plates for my other chucks. It was a chicken and egg situation because until I had the four-jaw chuck mounted I couldn't hold the centers in that. Fortunately I kept the face plate from the old lathe which went straight onto the bayonet mounting. So I mounted the other chuck plates onto the face plate for the machining. Here's the new back plate fitted, complete with the mounting studs. I had only one mounting stud from the old uh, back plate, which was made as a single piece similar to that on the right. I needed to make 20 and that would have been pretty time consuming and tedious to do out of one piece as they were originally made. So I cut off lengths of threaded rod and then made some threaded bushes. I needed to machine two spanner flats on these bushes and made a simple clamp for holding them in the milling machine. I previously mentioned that I machined some off the front of the spindle. That meant that the internal Morse taper 5 was too short and anything fitted would have too much stick out as shown with this 5C collet sleeve. I clocked it to set the compound rest at the correct angle and bored it deeper. Here we can see the same sleeve fitted properly. All that remained then was just a few final checks. At the end of any project I always ask myself what would I have done differently if I was doing it again. In this case I can't think of a single thing that I would have done differently. I'm very pleased with the whole result. 
If you uh, like this video or any of the others, please share and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click the uh, button to receive updates of any other videos. Thanks for watching.